beautiful, beautiful day. On behalf of the Razor family and all the, we want to just thank all of those who are gathered here on behalf of the family for this service. It's a beautiful day, celebrating a beautiful life. Would you please open your programs and let's sing this Love Lifted Me. This is a family request. We're going to sing, let's sing all three stanzas. Everybody join in. I was sinking deep in sin, open with peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, from the water said to me, a safe am I. Love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help. Love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help, love lifted me. All to him my breathing him, ever to him a cling, in his blessed presence live, ever his praises sing. Love so mighty and so true, marriage my soul's best song. Faithful, loving service to, to him belong. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, Love lifted me. Souls in danger, look above. Jesus completely saves. He will lift you by his love out of the angry waves. He's the master of the sea. Bellows it will obey. He your Savior wants to be. Be saved today. Love lifted me. Love lifted me, when nothing else could help. Love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. December 3rd, 1947, in Eugene, Oregon, to Avila Lily Burns Razor and Ralph E. Razor Sr. He went to school in Eugene, but he ended up leaving school before graduation. As I understand it, he began to work at Hanson's Dairy Farm. But then later on, he ended up joining the Navy. Now, while he was in the Navy, he had a friend named Bobby. Bobby was on the ship with him, and uh, one day they decided to pull out pictures of past girlfriends, and they began to share those pictures with each other. Bobby had a picture, not of a girlfriend, but of his cousin, uh, Joyce Bryant, and then they decided to trade the pictures. So Ralph got a picture of Joyce, he ended up getting Joyce's address. He ended up writing to Joyce. She wrote him back, and they started this long distance pen pal relationship that came, became a romantic relationship because they ended up getting married to each other. At some point, after three years of writing back and forth and never meeting each other, they decided that what they wanted to do was to get married. And so they were married on May 3rd, 1968, at Linwood, California. Ralph was being transferred to a new duty station, and as he had to leave from that, he married the love of his life. After his discharge from the Navy, Ralph and Joyce started a family in Southern California. Both of their children, Robbie and Gina, were born there. And then during this time, Ralph also ended up working for Georgia Pacific 
and he decided to finish his education by getting his GED. He and Joyce took on additional responsibility. Uh, they really loved kids and so they decided that they were going to work as foster parents and so they added new children to their family while they were in California. But there became a, there was a time uh, in 1979, in December, when they decided it was really time to move out of California. So they wanted to come to the Texas, Oklahoma area. They had some land, the family had some land in Oklahoma. But they really didn't want to live in Oklahoma for whatever reason. I don't know what the reason was. But they liked Texoma. And they decided to move to Howe, Texas. And that is where they ended up. And that's where they stayed. Through the years, Ralph managed several restaurants in this area. Some of the restaurants were Sambo's, The Kettle, Seasons, Wyatt's Cafeteria, and Furbs. But he eventually got out of the restaurant business and he worked for Johnson & Johnson as a forklift operator and he retired from J&J. And when he retired from J&J, he went back to school so that he could become a licensed massage therapist and he started his own business after he finished, after he got his license. He showed great concern for his patients and he ended up developing friendships with many of those patients. Ralph liked to work on cars is what I understand. But Robbie put it like this. He said, we worked on the ones that we broke. <laughs> so I don't know if he liked working on cars or if he was forced to work on, forced into working on cars or if he developed a like, uh, an affinity for working on cars after he broke many of them. I don't know what, how that worked. He liked to hunt and fish and he liked to eat. And his favorite restaurants were IHOP, Logan's Roadhouse, and Texas Roadhouse. And I understand that he and Dakota, when they would go to a Texas Roadhouse, that they would have this competition with each other. And they would see who would eat the most rolls. And Dakota claims that he would always win. So I don't know if that's true. Okay. So we got a lot of people know. All right. Now, uh, his favorite, though, was IHOP. And he was really a fixture at IHOP. Everybody at IHOP knew him. He knew everyone at IHOP. I know that when I went to IHOP, he seemed to be there. So I don't know if he lived at IHOP. I'm not sure exactly how that um, he'd, he'd take food. He'd always make sure he got enough food so he could take food home. And he, you know those uh, to-go uh, to boxes? Yeah. The, the plastic containers? Okay, he would take those with him. Now, Destiny would say, well, you've got Tupperware at home. But he saved all of these to-go boxes. All of them. He said, they're reusable. Why wouldn't you save them? So he, if you go to his house, you can probably see a bunch of things. Right? <laughs> Ralph was always very kind to me when we talked to each other. I could tell that he really did care about his family. Uh, he and Joyce were involved in his grandkids' lives. I could see that firsthand when I was a youth minister. He would take them to school activities, would take them to youth group activities. He would take them to dance competitions and to other states when those competitions arose. Uh, he helped with the school band. Uh, and through all of these activities, he got to know a lot of his grandkids' friends. And in some sense, they became like surrogate grandparents to a lot of other kids at the school. And he even treated his own daughters-in-law as his daughters. He would call them his daughters, they would call him dad. You know, one of the things that I did not realize about Ralph is how generous he was. Destiny said, if you needed it and he could provide it, it was done. It wasn't unusual for him to let people who were having difficult times, uh, to, to help people who were having difficult times and who just needed a place to stay, he would actually allow them to come and stay at his house. There were times that he fed people that, that needed food. There were times that he provided, helped them to find jobs. Uh, there was a family that he let, uh, gave them a house to stay in when they had lost their house. And the interesting thing is, it wasn't just family and close friends that he knew for a long time. These would be people that he may have just met. Now these actions remind me of a passage in Matthew chapter 25. Jesus tells this parable, the parable of the sheep and the goats. I'm not going to go over the whole, the whole parable, but I want to read part of it. 
Amos, starting in verse 34. It says, Then the king will say to those on his right, Come you who are blessed by my father and take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? And the king will reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you did, did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. You know, this parable was one of the ways that Jesus tried to show us, to share with us, what it looks like to love other people. Ralph may not have been a person who spoke the words, I love you, very often, but he was a person who showed that he loved by his actions. In showing his love by providing for others who were in need, by giving them shelter, he may have unknowingly been showing love to Jesus as well. He may not have realized that that's what he was doing. He showed love to those in need, he showed love to his family. And that is something to be remembered. It was just a few days ago, last Sunday, when Ralph passed away. Ralph was survived by his brothers and sisters, Violet Blaine, Lori Razor, Ed Razor, Patrick Razor, and Joe Razor. His son, Robbie Razor, and daughters, Linda Mayo, Crystal Jenkins Allen, Darla Razor, and Gina Morrison. His grandchildren, Cody Sparks, Christian Razor, Candace Phillips, Destiny Razor, Dominique Rideout, and spouse Eve Lynn, Rihanna Rideout, and fiance Troy Wade, Colton Razor, and fiance Jasmine Hamsey, Hunter Allen, Tyler Allen, Cassie Morrison, Dakota Razor, Timothy uh, Morrison, Leah Razor, Levi Razor, Lexus Morrison, and Athena Morrison, and his great granddaughter, Luane Siner. Other family members, Kirby Rideout and David Morrison, as well as a number of extended families in many states. Would you pray with me? Father, in times like this, it's sometimes hard to know what to think, what to say, what to feel. We have a host of emotions that run through us. Some of those emotions are sadness, grief. It can also be joy because of the memories that we have and, and the, just the joy that Ralph might bring to someone. But Father, we know that in these times we do suffer grief. And I know that Ralph's family is suffering that now. Father, we pray that you will be with each of them. That you will wrap them in your arms. That you will show them your love. That you will bring comfort to their hearts. That you will allow them to talk about the memories that they have. And to share stories that may bring a smile, but also a tear to each other. And Father, we pray for Ralph, for that you will cover him with your grace and mercy and love. We thank you so much for the hope that you give to us in Jesus. Father, we thank you for the love that you've shown to us in so many ways. And I pray, Father, that as the days come in the future, that Ralph's family will show each other love, that they'll show grace to one another, and that they will be drawn near you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. I want to let you know it's truly an honor to be a part of the service. It really wasn't all that long ago, just a few short years ago, that we were in this exact same place. And we were remembering the life and saying goodbye to Ralph's beloved wife. And as I was preparing for this, I went back and looked at a lot of the things that were said in, from the family there, looked at my notes, looked at the things that were said here. And I love it whenever 
the conversations, even though two different people. Some of the stories are the same. A lot of the connection is the same. And we take comfort in the fact that they're with each other again. They're beside each other once again. Rushdie spent a good uh, time talking about the life of Ralph, but there's so much more that could be said. Or maybe there's not that could be said because uh, there's a lot of things we can't talk about because our clearance isn't high enough from what I understand. Um, some of the things that he did or may have not done in the military and other things, I'll just leave it there. Truth be told though, there's a lot of things about Ralph that was pretty private. It's a pretty private guy in a lot of ways. He wasn't one to bring attention to himself. He was just pretty comfortable with who he was and it made people, other people comfortable with him as well. Because people felt safe with him. They would open up to him. And that's one of the things I saw and I got to be a part of is just how easy it was to be in conversation, to be around Ralph. Through some of these conversations, Ralph learned of needs people had, and Rusty had already mentioned this, that it was said, if he needed it and he could provide it, it was done. And over and over, that was a story that he lived out. If it was needed and he could provide it, he would. Oftentimes, the family didn't even know about all the things that he was doing. They might come over to the house and go, who is this staying here? Um, someone random is, is there, someone's there for dinner. He would help people in so many ways, whether it's finding a job, getting on their feet, whatever was needed. It reminds me of another passage, Matthew 6. It says, watch out. Don't do your good deeds publicly to be admired by others. For you will lose the reward from your Father in heaven. When you give to someone in need, don't do as the hypocrites do, blowing trumpets in the synagogues and streets to call attention to their acts of charity. I tell you the truth, they have received all the reward they will ever get. But when you give to someone in need, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Give your gifts in private, and your Father who sees everything will reward you. I think that sums up a lot of how Ralph lived his life kind of lived to that standard of not blowing any trumpets to every, all the things that he would do. So much so that I'm not sure that his right hand knew what his left hand was doing some of the time. And that is alright. It was just the kind of man Ralph was. People knew that Ralph would help them in their need. Opening up his home, helping people get a job, whatever it might be. I, I'm convinced that his home was always open and always people coming through. Which reminds me of another passage. 1 Peter 4, 8 says, Most important of all, continue to show deep love for each other, for love covers a multitude of sins. Cheerfully share your home with those who may need a meal or a place to stay. Ralph may not have been a, a big church-going guy, because sometimes church people can turn you away from church throughout the years this is a man that loved and it was clear he may not have said I love you but he spent his life showing his love for everyone around 1 John 3 17 if someone has enough money to live well and sees a brother or sister in need but shows no compassion how can God's love be in that person Dear children, let's not merely say that we love each other. Let's show the truth by our actions. I think if one thing all of us could learn from Ralph is showing love by actions. I think everyone here is a recipient of his love through actions somewhere. Now, don't get me wrong. Ralph could be stubborn from time to time or maybe more often than that. But even in a stubbornness, you would know he still loves you. And even if the stubbornness went into a little bit more of a fight, and neither of the stubborn people, Destiny, would know how to get out of it, he would still show his love in that moment to say, 
We're gonna resolve this conflict. You want to go to IHOP? Yep. <laughs> it's the best way to resolve conf uh, conflict. Is let's go eat. And he would do that. I think that stubbornness served him well, and will serve many of you well as well. Also, <laughs> here's a poem that the family uh, has put into the program. It's titled "Limb Has Fallen." I searched as well to see if I could find who actually authored it, and everyone says they don't know. Yeah. Author unknown, but it still is a very good one. I want to, I want to read it to you right now. It says a limb had fallen from the family tree. I keep hearing a voice that says, "Grieve not for me." Remember the best times, the laughter, the song, the good life lived while I was strong. Continue my heritage. I'm counting on you. Keep smiling, and surely the sun will shine through. My mind is at ease, my soul is at rest, remembering all, now I truly was blessed. Continue traditions, no matter how small, go on with your life, don't just stare at the wall. I miss you all dearly, keep up your chin, until the day comes, we're together again. That's the day that we long for. That's a day that, as a Christian, I'm glad that I, I have a hope for that. And I know that Christ gives us hope for that day, that we will be together again. And until that day, we grieve, we remember, and we honor a life well left. At this time, we're going to have military honors, and then I will close us in a prayer. Please rise for the rendering of military honors. Veterans may render a hand salute. All others, please place your hand over your heart.
States of the United States Navy and grateful nation. Please accept this flag with the symbol of our appreciation. Our welcome to our home. Heavenly Father, as we close out this time remembering the life of Ralph, I just want to thank you so much for not only the people here, but your presence in this moment. Thank you for your hands of comfort upon this family, and I pray that they continue. And as we lay body to rest beside his beloved wife, May we continue to remember, may we continue to honor the life well lived, and may we strive to follow your son so that we can be together with family and with you one day again. Lord, may the lessons we've learned may the life that he lived inspire us. Be with us, Lord. Thank you for this time together this afternoon. It's in Jesus' name we pray.